Greetings, everyone. Nate the Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for nerds by nerds, hanging out with some nerds. Nerdark is Ted. Nerdark is Dave. And join us for our flip through through the new Starfinder book. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. All right, and join us as we begin our flip through of the Starfinder Coral Rulebook from Paizo. You can find a link to uh, get your own copy from Amazon in the description below. All right, so right from the beginning, we have this amazing star field, planet, uh, planets, the sun, the solar system of the Pack World system, and that is where the campaign takes place. Here we have the cast of characters from Starfinder, all the different races and class options in there. Glorious table of contents with some... Uh, if you look nice way style. down here, you can see the massive uh, page count of over 500 in this thick tome of information. And, you know, if you haven't already noticed the spectacular artwork, you know, you can see here a full, you know, you know, two, uh, two page display of uh, space battle ongoing. I gotta be honest, guys, I'm not a Pathfinder fan, but when that, I started seeing the art coming out of the Starfinder, I just knew I wanted to check it out. It, they totally sold me with the art. I completely agree on all, on all accounts. This is going to go into the kind of overview of play and what to expect from the book. Breaking down an RPG game and things like that. And they also have some uh, examples of uh, actual gameplay with different characters and different players. And here we move into the character creation and more scenic pictures. Now here we have the themes for the Starfinder game. This is this is a new uh, new to uh, the Pathfinder system. Really, it's in Starfinder. I do not believe it exists in Pathfinder. So we have you know Ace Pilot. It's an amazing piece of art there. We got our bounty hunter icon. Icon. Part, pop stars of the universe. Mercenary, that guy looks absolutely brutal. The four-armed uh, race, which I cannot remember right now, but we're going to get there soon enough yeah. as an outlaw. Can't trust anyone with that many alarms. We <laughs> have Priest and we have Scholar. Sorry, I didn't get that one. Spacefarer and Xeno Seeker. And boom, look at that fight going on. Yeah, this, I mean, this book is gorgeous. Who doesn't like fighting bugs? And here, here we have the, you know, the, the brief synopsis of the races. So fir first of the races is the android. And they are quite cool. Yeah, you know, if you're going to have a space game, you got to have robots. As classic humans. And here's the, the, the four-armed race, the Kasathas. Telepathic uh, race, the Lashuntas. We got the, the nice lizard uh, draconic people, the Vesk. Yeah, you gotta have the lizard men in space. Yeah, it's a trope, man. It's a trope for sure. And how you wanna pronounce that one? Yusoki? Yusoki, you little rat guys. Conceptually, I really like that. Another fantastic, you know, two-page piece of artwork. And that gets us into the classes. There, here's our overview shot of the classes. Showing you the, the seven options that are in the book. We got an envoy. So each, uh, each class gives you a breakdown of some of the themes and how it mixes with that particular class. And it kind of gives you like an archetype of what that would wind up being. In this case, we have an ambassador, a military officer, negotiator, scoundrel. So it's a really cool element to the, to the game and for the classes to help, help players decide what they want to play. So we move on to mechanic because every, every uh, party gets their own ship. And if you don't have someone to fix it, you're probably going to be in trouble. So in the in the mechanic, you got your combat technician, your enhanced commando, your saboteur, and your starship engineer. It's really a fun way to use those themes and integrate 
them into the character into the character classes that to create new and unique flavorful characters for you. So this is your mystic. So if, if you want to be able to cast spells and not really be into the technology side of things, this is where you're going to want to go. And then this is also where we see that the level of uh, spell casting is much lower than, than Pathfinder. Sixth level instead of ninth. So now you guys are not locked into, oh, well, if I'm going to play a mystic and a spacefarer, I'm considered a shaman. That's just what, that's an option that they that they give you. Yeah, you have Crusader, Chaplain, Empath, Star Shaman, Xeno Druid. Some really cool options there. Here we have Operative. I'm guessing this is going to be like your rogue analog from, you know, some other you know, fantasy type games like Pathfinder. Bond, Space Bond. Which here's, this is really cool. Uh, you know, the themes again. I love the way, the way they mash the themes in there. Because we got a hacker, investigator, thief. Trailblazer. Trailblazer, absolutely. So now we have Solarian. Uh, yeah, this is, this is somebody who literally derives power from the celestial masses. You know, and and the, the powers that move about the planets. So if we're talking about analogs, this is kind of like your space paladin, but not quite. Let's see how we mash these up. We have champion, we have cosmic mercenary, luminous explorer, and outcast. And again, they're only giving you four out of the, the nine options, so. Mix and match as you like. Indeed. So. I love this guy. This guy is so iconic looking. Every, uh. Every band is going to need a, you know, a soldier to get in and kill stuff. And, well, here it is. You got it. So you mix it up with bodyguard, close combatant, sniper, and spell soldier. Technomancer in the house. I think that just, that's going to sing the need, I think. <laughs> yes, so the, definitely. The, te the Technomancer literally merges magic and technology together. You know, they, they they need both in order to completely function. And once again, we see only six level spells. That is where the game caps off at. We have a battle mage, a corporate tech mage, a research scientist, and a thaumaturge. Ooh. You also have it. So we're in the skill section, and we're going to kind of cherry pick through, and the flip through is going to become a little more fat, rapid now as we just look for cool things to show you guys. There we go. Oh, man, in the equipment section, look at that. Freaking Martian goblins. See, part of me, you know, loves the Pathfinder goblins so much. It's, it's such spectacular art. I see that, and I want to play that character <laughs> right there. Yeah, the weapons page. Here we go. Uh... Here's some options for you. You know, when you're laying down the smackdown on the baddies, you're going to need some guns. I mean, you know, come on. Who, who doesn't want one of these bad boys right here? That's right. And it wouldn't be a sci-fi fantasy game without some melee weapons. Nice. As well as sci-fi armor. When things get dangerous, you're going to want to armor up, and here's some options. Yeah, I could, I could see getting into a Jarl Slayer with a, you know, built-in uh, missile launcher. Don't leave home without your power armor. You got some add-ons for your armor, you know. Force field, jetpack, automated systems. loader. There's some nice hybrid items. And vehicles. This is the start of the vehicle section. There are tons of awesome ship pictures. Man, look at that splash page. Tactical mm. rules. Um, yeah, again, it just completely sells the point that they they really they really put their money's worth in the art. We're into, you know, conditions, because 
Lord knows that, you know, RPGs need rules on, oh my God, I'm this. Radiation poisoning, what happens? You need yeah. to know. Alien infestation, what happens? Oh, oh man, right. hover cars. Those. Or maybe not hover cars, maybe it's just jumping. <laughs> Vehicle rules. They're getting into it, mixing it up. And here we get into the spacefaring aspects of this adventure, including building starships. So starships are uh, completely in integral to the actual system, and it actually says that every adventuring party, for one reason or another, has access to a starship, and you know, work it out with your GM, whether you owe money on it, whether you just own it. Um, yeah, and then there's a variety of different classifications. There's specific, you know, space battle rules of how you actually engage in said battles because it's not just as simple as, okay, well, you know, this guy points and shoots and I sit here and do this. And you now there's actual phases of combat. And if you don't do something during the appropriate phase, you're going to have to wait till next round. Yeah. So different, different rules of engagement and how we, that turn actually goes. Although I've also seen it discussed where they do talk about playing the game without spaceships so you could be on a you know you could be on a space station or planet this is true so you could you could have a ship and it just moves you from place to place you could be on a space station and not really require it but the the book specifically states that you know you should have access to a ship and you know, magic what, and spells So as we saw in the classes, the, the magic only goes up to 6th level. So unlike the, the Pathfinder system, where you have 9 levels of spells, it makes it a little bit more streamlined. But I don't feel that, you know, even though it's streamlined, that you, ever ha that you have any loss of impact. You know, looking at the 6th level spells, they're appropriate to what a 20th level caster should, should be doing. Well, here we have the adventures and campaign settings sections and it gets into the environments and everything pretty much you need to run your adventure so like you know talking about environments it's really important because when you're traveling in space and in distant planets not everybody's going to be completely breathing the same thing and some ships actually you know have open pockets into the vacuum of space so got to be careful what you're doing get what you you know you're typically gonna get laser blasts all over the place you know it's gonna happen deal with it traps and the setting is of course gonna be you know important because whether you're doing like a firefly campaign where it's more about being on the ship and you know keep it floating or whether you're in a space station and not actually having access to a ship and it's more about you know the, the people that you're going to interact you know with regularly definitely is a different feel so now we're looking at the uh, packed world's timeline and how things have unfolded and there's a lot of lot of rich history within within that timeline, well worth uh, knowing about, especially if any of your players are really into what's actually occurred in the past. To go from you know uh, the, the fantasy type style of, of Pathfinder into actual space travel. Can't have a solar system without the sun. So now we're getting into the pack worlds.
This is kind of uh, important to the setting. This is the Absalom Station. And I believe this is where a lot of adventures are going to start and happen. So this is Eox. This is the, you know, literally the planet of the dead. There's a whole faction that you're, you might wind up running across that their even their ships are powered by undead creatures and there's whole sections of their ships that are just completely open to the vacuum of space so that you know not just anybody can walk through all right so now we're getting into beyond the packed world and we're going to be looking at i believe this is monsters and stuff Or adversaries, as the case may be. Perhaps just NPCs that you, your character, your players are going to be able to interact with. You know, everything from people to animals to monsters to machines. Let's see. Okay, just talk about that. So now we're getting into factions and organizations, because let's face it, you know, when you've got the future. As we've already seen in today's society, there's already groups. So here, here you have some groups that you can either affiliate with or be put up against. So here we have the faith and religion section. These are all the different philosophies and religions that guide people in the realm and form the basis of their belief. Oh, look at that. Because you need space dragons. Pathfinder Legacy. Now with dragons. So there's a section here on character conversion. So can help you guide guide to take your characters from your Pathfinder into a uh, Starfinder game. This whole section is going to be crossing over and the cross sections of Pathfinder and Starfinder. Here, as you can see, we're getting all the races from Pathfinder that you can just plop right into your game. And it comes with your character sheets required for the game, as well as... <laughs> hey guys, that concludes our Starfinder flip through. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, do you want to see more Starfinder content? As well, if you're looking for your own core rulebook, you can find a link in the description. So comment, like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com. Or you can hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.